Well, we all certainly recognize that TV theme song. That was the theme to Family Affair, which ran on CBS from 1966 to 1971. Our guest today is Kathy Garver, who played Sissy on Family Affair and also had a number of other high-profile roles throughout her career, many of which are covered in her new autobiography, Surviving Sissy, which is in bookstores now. And uh, since we don't have a lot of time with uh, Miss Garver, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to get right into it. That's fine with me. Thank you. Now, was your book, Surviving Sissy, something that had been uh, percolating inside you for some time? I actually started on this book 10 years ago. Hmm. I don't recommend that for most authors, but (laughs) I had started compiling my memories, and then a couple things happened in between, like my house burned down. Oh, my goodness. I had to do some movies, and some of my papers got burned up, so... uh, I, uh, it's been a work for a while, but then when I made a two-book deal with Roman publishers and they gave me a deadline, that really put the fire under my feet and got me going, and I finished it, which is nice. And my second, well, actually my third book will be out in March called Ex-Child Stars, Where Are They Now? You know, I... That I, one only took six months. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd, l- I'd like to uh, go back to the very beginning of your career and discuss with you The Ten Commandments. Now, that's the biggest and most prestigious film uh, one could ever hope to make their debut in. And even though your, your part in the film was relatively small, do you, do you have any memories of, of working on that uh, epic film? I do, because it wasn't the silent version. <laughs> this was the, the one that the great Cecil B. DeMille, the director, did a little bit later. And I was a small child, but I have many memories and sensory memories uh, as well. And I was just hired as an extra to mm. be one of the throngs uh, in the crowds of slaves that were leaving to find uh, a new land. And I was to be in a little rickety wagon. And all of a sudden, I heard this big voice boom out, Don't let that little girl's face get in the camera! And I said, <laughs> Uh-oh, what did I do? I said, Is that God? We are working on the Ten Commandments. <laughs> but I found it wasn't really God, God. It was a cinematic deity, and that was Cecil B. DeMille, who was up on this great big crane, taking a big master shot from above. And so he came down and then came over, talked to me, and he actually wrote scenes into the movie for me with Charlton Heston and, uh, and some of the other stars. So it was quite an experience. I was actually there during the closing of the Red Sea, and Mr. DeMille always used like three cameras because he wanted to get a master shot and then a closer shot, and then always just to be sure... It, he had the third camera, and this third camera was put way up on the catwalk where they had all these vats of water that were to descend when he yelled action, like the Red Sea closing. And there were uh, wagons and people and donkeys, and I was supposed to go from uh, my perch on this paper mache mountain up into Nina Foch's arm. So everything was set. It had taken two days. <laughs> to set up the scene. So he says, action! And the wagons go, and the camels go, and the donkeys and I climb up uh, into Nina Foch's arm, and he says, cut! That was great! He says, camera number one, how was it for you? Camera number one operator says, oh, Mr. Tenille, I am so sorry. A camel walked right in front of the lens. I, I didn't get the shot. <laughs> you didn't get the shot. He says, camera number two, how was it for you? Mr. DeMille, I'm so sorry. Water splashed all over the lens. I didn't get the shot. You didn't get the shot? Then you remembered the little guy operator way up on the catwalk, and he said, camera number three, how was it for you? And the operator called back and said, ready when you are, CB. (laughs) Popular prices. Of course, in the years that followed the Ten Commandments, you made guest appearances on TV programs like Mr. Novak and uh, The Bing Crosby Show and Death Valley Days. But when you were cast as Sissy on Family Affair, you became a household name 
overnight. Was that difficult for you to cope with? Well, my parents were very smart, and uh, that's why I lived to tell about it and survived. Um, I started, I had just gotten almost out of my teens, and from all the work that I did as a child, from Ten Commandments and Patty Duke Show and This Is Alice and all kinds of things, um, I went away to high school in a little town in San Bernardino, which is about an hour and a half from Los Angeles, but, you know, miles away from Hollywood. Right. Uh, and the teen stardom, I, uh, I was shy. You know, I said, why are all these people coming towards me, and why, you know, do they ask me for my autograph? I mean, I don't understand. So my PR person at the time just said, well, they want, you know, an autograph from you. Think of it like as a present. You're giving them something. You're making them happy. So I like to make people happy, and so I gave a lot of autographs, and it was okay. It's different now with all the social media and the Twitter and poor right. teens these days. You know, they wear the wrong color sweater, and oh my gosh, they're inundated with a million tweets. Oh, did you see that pink sweater? <laughs> Wasn't that a horror? <laughs> it's true. And, and, of course, you were in the magazines at the time, the teen magazines. I mean, that must have been surreal. I had a couple columns in Photoplay, which is, was like the people or the us of, of today, and uh, asked Kathy, you know, what <laughs> advice does Kathy have to tell you? Oh, and they fixed me up with all kinds of faux bows and <laughs> for publicity shoots, and that was actually kind of fun. I like that. <laughs> Now, I would think on the set of Family Affair, Sebastian Cabot and Brian Keith seem to me to be completely different kinds of actors. Uh, can you talk a little bit about working with both of them? Well, Sebastian came from an English style. I actually went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art after I graduated from UCLA, and I studied the way that uh, the English study, which is scene analysis and uh, character building, and Sebastian would go every weekend and dutifully learn every single line, word by word. He had a little trouble memorizing. He'd come to the set during the week. He'd go over the lines with a dialogue coach, so he had everything perfect. Brian, on the other hand, would come on the set and say, okay, what do we have today? Oh, these are the scenes? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, let's go. <laughs> And he would go for the moment, and his reactions would be uh, in his emotions from what he felt at that time. So I think that the that dynamic between them was really good for the show and uh, added a lot. Our guest today on the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop is actress Kathy Garver, best known for her role as Sissy on Family Affair. At the very end there, we... Heard a little bit of a scene with Sebastian Cabot and Anissa Jones. Sebastian Cabot just had that incredible voice. And, of course, you went into voice acting later, but, my goodness, he was everywhere. I mean, he narrated Winnie the Pooh. Winnie and... the Pooh, he did a beautiful Bagheera in the Jungle Book. Disney loved him because he did have that fabulous, resonant voice that was quite commanding. <laughs> Interesting, because he... Uh, had a Cockney accent. He was born in, in some of you know the, the lower echelons in England and had this Cockney accent, and uh, then he learned to speak beautifully. Oh, so he had elocution lessons. Interesting. Yes, he did. Actually, I, I teach speech as we speak uh, up in San Francisco, and I majored in speech in college. That's why I talk so much. <laughs> Would you tell that girl to be quiet? We want to hear what Dave has to say. <laughs> no, no. We want to hear from you. Can, can I ask you about uh, your little co-star who played Buffy on the show, Anissa? Which means a little friend in Lebanese. And she was a little friend to so many people. She was a very kind, very smart little girl. She was a delight. She would uh, cook things sometimes at her house and bring them and share them with everybody on the set. She was friends with all of the crew. She was a very happy little girl. We, um, I would go over to her house and we would do sleepovers and she would come to my house so she really was like a little sister and, and we had a great time and it was just tragic what happened to her and how sometimes the production companies and directors and public relations people push our young stars today that was some of the impetus for me writing this book about ex-child stars where are they now 
and there are some tragedies that happen because, well, it's very hard to regulate anything like that, um, although now, and pa- due to Paul Peterson from the Donna Reed Show, got laws passed, uh, the Coogan Law, for instance, which saves a portion of a young star's money in a special account, so people just can't go willy-nilly spend it, you know, the families on their mortgage or the other kids in the house, you know, that uh, someone that has spent their childhood working at least has something to show for it when they turn 18. Now, you've been very active in the voiceover world. In fact, in the 1980s, you were on a TV series, a Saturday morning cartoon series called Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, playing one of the amazing friends. And that character was specifically created for the cartoon, but it's now been adopted into the official Marvel Comics universe. So you have a whole different fan base. It's great. Yes, I was Firestar and Angelica Jones. <laughs> and, you know, both these shows, like uh, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friend and, and Family Affair, are classics. Um, Family Affair is still on MeTV. Um, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends can still, is still on the Saturday morning cartoons. There are DVDs of Family Affair. I go to a lot of comic book conventions, and fans will come up to me and say, oh, I loved you as Firestar. And some were unaware because you just hear my voice, and you don't see what I look like. That's what I love about voiceovers. You can do them (laughs) at home in your pajamas, or you don't have to look like a superheroine with firebolts coming out of your fingers or whatever. (laughs) And they can tell me every single episode, and they are, as you say, it's a whole Marvel universe and realm, and they know all of the characters in there. As do I. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I know that people who go to comic book conventions like to dress up as their favorite characters. Has anyone approached you actually dressed as your character, Five Star? No. um, There are a lot of Spider-Mans, but at one convention, I bought the outfit that this fellow had, you know, with the, these really spandex yellow sure. uh, things and tights. And uh, I actually never wore it, but I did buy one of those blow-up dolls. Now, I must tell you, okay. please don't Google a blow-up doll. <laughs> <laughs> I went to do that just so I could dress the doll in this outfit. Well, I'm telling you, I got porn for about a year before they finally <laughs> said, oh, I guess she's not really interested in that. So that, that was quite an experience, I must say. <laughs> now, the book, again, is Surviving Sissy, and it's in bookstores everywhere. Is there a place online where people can catch up with you? Well, if they can get an autograph copy, actually, at my website, which is www.kathygarver.com, K-A-T-H-Y-G-A-R-V-E-R. And, of course, it's on Amazon and all of the online stores. It's in Barnes & Noble. And now people have been writing some wonderful reviews, which I really appreciate. So if people do, uh, can get the book or give it for uh, Christmas presents, they can write nice reviews. If you don't like it, don't write a review. <laughs> but so far, they've been great because it's full of laughs. You'll be touched by it. It has a lot of knowledge in it. And at the end, it's quite inspiring. And that's why it's so heavy. <laughs> well, we just scratched the surface of it uh, during this interview, so everyone's going to have to run out and get the book to get the rest of the story. Miss Garbert, thank you so much for uh, appearing on the show today, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. 